Hi, my name is John Blair and in this tutorial I'll show you how you can send notifications to a mobile device or laptop. The agenda for this tutorial then is we'll take a look at a couple of demos. Uh, one setting up notifications on a laptop and another setting up uh, notifications on a mobile. Uh, we'll look at the Umbraco architecture behind that and we'll look at some uh, sample code snippets. On your website uh, you should set up a content page uh, that manages the subscription from the user. Here's a sample on my Azure site and uh, what the subscription service does is it invites the user to subscribe to notifications for example, if a new video or a new survey is created and you want to let your users know about it, you get them to subscribe to your notification service. And the way this works is that if you have a laptop computer that you subscribe on, it will come in as a notification on the Windows notification area. If your user subscribes on their phone, it will come in as a notification just like an app. Uh, so to subscribe, uh, you just click on subscribe and that's you subscribed. If you have a look at the back office in Umbraco, I have a plugin that's got uh, notice of my subscribers and here you see I've got two at the moment. Uh, one is this laptop that I've just uh, subscribed on and the other is my Android phone. Uh, whenever you subscribe in the browser, uh, three parts of the subscription are, are needed to send the notification, the endpoint and these other two keys. Uh, once you have them stored, then what you can do is you can send a, a notification. Uh, and I've just uh, set up uh, title a message and a URL that I want to direct the, the user to. Uh, if it's a new video you're creating, then uh, direct them to your your video. So we're just going to send this notification now to our subscribed users. Uh, once it's sent, uh, my screen resets. If you look down here, you'll see I've got uh, one new notification. If I open that up you'll see that uh, we get a notification of the new video and I can dismiss this or I can click view. If I click view, there's the, the YouTube video and that, uh, that uh, completes the sample on the, the laptop. In Umbraco, you set up uh, the notification system uh, through a content page on uh, the front end. Uh, so this is the mobile notifications, which I add in my menu. Uh, this page has a user notify subscription section, which is essentially an Angular directive that uh, handles the user subscribing or unsubscribing to the service. Uh, and you configure the subscription text that you want to give 
So on the front end, this appears, this is the title section, and here's the Angular directive to control the subscription. And uh, so that's the front end. On the back office, uh, I created a, a plugin. Uh, I've got a couple other utilities in there, and I added the Notify Subscribers uh, plugin. Uh, this has got two tabs, uh, one that uh, records uh, all the subscribers that uh, allow you to edit or delete them, and the other one is uh, a tab that allows you to send uh, notifications to those uh, subscribers. Uh, another part of the architecture that you might find useful is that uh, during development, uh, I developed on local IIS or HTTP. Uh, notifications generally work over secure communications. So in order to develop and test locally, uh, I configured Chrome to allow my local IIS website uh, to be treated as secure. That then allowed me to uh, debug it uh, before I pushed it to Azure. The other item you should be aware of is the service worker. Uh, while developing that, uh, what I found is that this application tab for service workers was useful and that uh, I could update that to test out new features and uh, click notifications, e.g. for testing out buttons, uh, view or close buttons, etc. in your notification. Uh, this was uh, very handy. So that uh, completes the Umbraco tour. Looking at how this is implemented then, so here we have a user notification subscription section that's been added to the page, which just takes a prompt and uh, a template for that is implemented in the back office, as you see on screen. Uh, crucially, it uses a, an Angular directive, notify, subscribe, and the text on screen that you saw, the prompt, which is HTML, takes that as a parameter and uh, presents that. Uh, this directive uh, just has a simple piece of HTML here, which uh, yeah, displays the HTML uh, for the prompt, uses a Angular.js filter just to uh, make the HTML secure. And then it presents two buttons uh, that we see on screen to subscribe or unsubscribe. Unsubscribing will uh, remove the subscription from the browser and from the uh, back office uh, SQL Server database uh, and this subscribe will save the subscription into the back office database uh, so that when we send notifications we pull them all out from a SQL Server database which I've got on Azure as well as locally. Uh, in terms of the directive implementation, uh, it's essentially only got two real methods, subscribe and unsubscribe. Uh, subscribe will get the subscription from the, the browser, then uh, I'll extract the endpoint and the two keys and uh, save that to the server uh, database table and uh, provide some feedback to the user that they've subscribed. Uh, 
unsubscribing will take the uh, remove the subscription from the browser and also remove it from the server. If we take a look at the get subscription then, uh, what it does is it will register service worker and the service worker file is located at the root of the website. Uh, if, it, uh, if it's unable to register the service worker then uh, we'll, we'll get an error. Uh, this can happen if the user is using the browser incognito. Uh, user tracking via subscriptions is not supported in Chrome uh, when you're in incognito mode is one example. Uh, So we, uh, we register the service worker and we ask the user for permission to display notifications. Uh, the browser will ask this uh, once per site. Uh, it then stores the fact that you've approved notifications in the browser. Uh, so you won't get reprompted. Uh, again by the browser uh, unless you specifically go into your privacy section within the, the browser and remove that approval. So uh, once you've uh, approved that then uh, what we do is uh, we get the BAPID public key uh, which is part of this uh, messaging protocol uh, the BAPID uh, is generated and stored on the server. I have a, uh, just a console app that generates a public and a private key. We store them uh, on the server. And uh, in my case, I just pull over the public key, which we need uh, as uh, part of the subscription parameters. So pull that over from the server and pass that into generating the subscription parameters. Uh, so that's the, the key in this other uh, parameter, which uh, probably is only used in Chrome, but uh, the same setup works uh, on Edge as well. And uh, so we use the registrations push manager to actually uh, subscribe to push notifications and we pick up the subscription and return that. Uh, when we return it, what we do is we convert that subscription to something that we can save on the server and uh, add my own uh, local object. Uh, pull out the subscription keys, two keys, convert it to base64 and save the endpoint and uh, bump that onto the, the server. That's, uh, that's essentially it for subscribing. Uh, when a notification is sent, it's picked up by the service worker and in my case I the payload of the notification uh, essentially has a, a title and a URL and a message. They're the, the three items that are requested on the, the back office and uh, we decode that, uh, deserialize it uh, from the server, uh, and then we present it in the notification. I have two buttons in the notification uh, view and close. Uh, it's only if the user clicks on view will we be taken 
to the URL. So you know, we see a notification click, check that it is the view event uh, within the notification. And uh, there's an existing window. Then uh, we show up, if not, we open up a new window with the uh, URL. On the back office, uh, when we click the button to send a notification, it, it comes through here, so it supplies the title, the message, the URL, calls into the send notification, uh, which uh, makes use of the web push. Uh, you may get plugin. This one here by Corey Thompson, and I use that uh, in the console app for generating a public and private VAP ID key, and then in the back office utilities section uh, to actually send a notification. So as uh, the actions. Uh, that country I'm sending is the title of the mission URL are converted to this payload that we extract in the service worker here uh, so that gets serialized we get the BAP ID so that's the public and private key along with the uh, your own contact details. Uh, we then use the web push package to look around all the subscriptions that that we get. Uh, we we'll create a new push subscription for each using the the subscription details that we got in the browser. Uh, the endpoint and these two keys. Uh, we then send the notification providing our VAP ID details together with the subscription and the payload which is the title message in the URL. Uh, so we send that to all subscribers and if any of those fail we do a bit of clean up by just uh, deleting the subscription from the, the back office uh, database table. Uh, to avoid any resends or failed uh, subscriptions and that completes the code tour.